What's good? What's healthy? Well, you have to know what the definition of healthy is. So Michael Pollan, in his book, Food Rules, famous, and, and in his New York Times Magazine article, famously said seven words, three clauses, seven words. Eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Okay, And I know that a lot of people out there are plant-based. Now, I'm not mad at you for being plant-based, but you got to think about what that means. All right. First of all, let's take each clause one at a time. Eat food. What does that mean? Eat food. Well, you know, some people need a low fat diet other people need a high fat diet. You know, in fact, there are genetic reasons and there are also environmental reasons why some people do better on one versus the other. And that's not really addressed in this, in this uh, statement. Not too much. Not too much doesn't take into account this mitochondrial dysfunction business. And finally, mostly plants. Let me remind you that Coke, Doritos, and Oreos are all plant-based. They're all vegan. So just because you're vegan doesn't mean you're healthy. And just because you're keto doesn't mean you're healthy either, by the way. All right? You can do, I mean, either one can do it wrong. All right? So I don't have a horse in the race. I am not pro-vegan. I'm not anti-vegan. I'm not pro-keto. I'm not anti-keto. I'm not even pro-carnivore or anti-carnivore. I am agnostic. The only thing I'm against is processed food because it's not what's in the food. It's what's been done to the food and really what they did to the food. And that's why I wrote Metabolical because I basically you know, understand now that this has been a put-up job for the last 50 years. And our food has been contaminated very specifically for profit. And it's not listed on the food label. You can't figure it out by looking at the food label as to whether or not there's actually, you know, whether the food is healthy or not. So I suggest rather two principles, six words, not seven, two principles, two, two clauses. Protect the liver, feed the gut. Protect the liver from what? Well, mostly from sugar, but also from glyphosate, from heavy metals, okay, from, um, they're meant, uh, from branched-chain amino acids, and feed the gut. Well, feed the gut what? Well, feed the gut fiber, because fiber is the food for your bacteria, and fiber helps you because it slows the rate of absorption, thereby keeping your glucose down, thereby keeping your insulin down. It also in initiates satiety sooner, so you won't eat that second portion. It supplies uh, substrate for your uh, gut to turn into short-chain fatty acids, and it also helps clear uh, cancer cells from your colon. The question is, processed food is not going away. And I'm not even sure we want it to go away because we have to feed um, 10 billion people by the year 2050. How are we going to do that if we got rid of processed food? And there's not enough place to grow food if we actually uh, anticipated that every, everyone would eat real food. So the question is, what are we going to do? This is, the, this is the big conundrum for the 21st century. How are we going to fix our climate and fix our food all at the same time? So what we have to do is we have to make processed food healthier. Can it be done? And the answer is yes, it can. And we're doing it. In fact, uh, I and a scientific team are working with a company, a, food, a, a processed food company in Kuwait, called KDD, Kuwaiti Danish Dairy. They make, they're basically the Nestle of the Middle East. And what we're doing is we've analyzed their entire 176 item portfolio to protect and, and, and re-engineered each item to be, to protect the liver, feed the gut, and also in fact, support the brain with omega-3s. Now, other companies know that this is an issue Danone and Unilever have actually analyzed their portfolio and have reduced their sugar footprint by 14%. Now, they know there's a problem. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done that. 14%. When we are consuming quadruple the amount that our liver can handle, you think a 14% reduction is going to make a difference? I don't know. I'm a little concerned. That's kind of like a little too little too late. In the KDD project, we have identified 78% of the added sugar that can be removed 
not just safely, but healthfully in order to actually create healthy processed food. And we are doing this right now. And the World Economic Forum is helping to sponsor this and to help promulgate it as well. This is the Davos people. So I'm gonna close with this slide. This was the cover of Newsweek a couple of months ago. Toxic food, indeed, that's right. Ultra processed food raises the risk of diabetes, cancer, heart disease, obesity, and dying of COVID-19. Because it turns out insulin resistance is a primary driver of inflammation. And inflammation is the thing that you die of in COVID-19. The cytokine response. Processed food is killing us through cr uh, chronic metabolic disease. And it's also killing us through infectious disease, both. Toxic food is the problem. Real food is the solution. We're working on other op opportunities to try to make processed food healthier. I'm happy to answer questions about those during the um, Q&A, but the bottom line is until we fix the food, don't expect anything to get better. Mm -hmm.